Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to talk to you today about the increased risk we see of celiac disease. Uh, not everybody realizes that the incidence of celiac has increased. Statistically, we talk about it as occurring in 1% of the population, but research that was done over a year ago now points to the fact that as our population ages, the incidence actually increases up to 4%. And initially that was hard to think with because how does a genetic disease change in frequency uh, depending on your age? So what we realized, and this is uh, coming a lot from the work of uh, Dr. Alessio Fasano, was the realization that while you need uh, the genetics for celiac disease as well as gluten sensitivity, different genes but similar conditions, uh, and you need the presence of gluten in your diet, certainly. The third thing that you need is an unhealthy small intestine. And what we mean by unhealthy specifically is that the good bacteria in the small intestine, which make up uh, the abundance of our immune system, 80% of which is housed in our small intestine, those good bacteria when they are nice and robust and healthy, have the ability to keep bad genes turned off. In other words, someone could have the gene for celiac disease, they could be eating gluten, and with a healthy, robust population of these probiotics, also known as the microbiome, that celiac disease gene would be kept turned off and that person would not express the disease. However, what we have seen is that as our population ages um, in this particular study, that incidence increased up to 4% and it's thought to be because of this lessening health of the microbiome or the healthy probiotics. It got me to thinking the other day, uh, and, and this is not a optimistic thought, I will precede with that uh, or preface with that, and normally I'm a glasses half full kind of person, but uh, the facts are these, that we know that 20% 20, 20 of our population has the genes for celiac disease, and it's always been a, a nice discrepancy that only 1% have actually expressed the disease, but now we're seeing this rise up to 4%, maybe more. Um, in congruence with this, similar uh, types of problems, autism, autoimmune disease, and of course celiac is an autoimmune disease, we're seeing these trajectories that look like this of increasing incidence of these diseases. And it got me to thinking that because 20% of the population has this gene, and with our diet being less healthy, with more chemicals coming into our body, um, more pollutants, more synthetic types of foods, genetically modified foods, all these things are weakening the probiotic population and we could see what we're seeing in autoimmune um, diseases in general as well as autism is this terrific increase, maybe getting up to that 20% of the population that has it because we are not having healthy small intestines. Our digestive tract is not nearly as healthy as it should be. So it goes back to a theme that I talk about often, uh, but it's something we really, really have to put our emphasis on is certainly we want to find out if someone is gluten intolerant right now in their life and if it's affecting them. But we also need to really address how to keep our small intestine as healthy as possible. There are tests now available showing do you have a leaky gut or not. There are uh, tests showing the population of these probiotics. Now, it's a very complex population, but there are tests looking at the balance, if there's too many bad versus good, uh, et cetera. So there are tests out there for that. So um, there's a lot we can do. So I'm just kind of throwing it out there as food for thought, but also as something that I, I really want you to look at focusing on for you and your family because we could actually prevent the expression of a lot of these diseases if we really made the effort to eat so much better and really eschew or, or not have come into our lives um, a lot of these non-foods. So, um, and, and just a quick 
comment to finish up is that um, just today I saw that uh, steak was being recalled because this steak <laughs> actually had uh, turkey fillets within it um, in a company. So it was recalled by the company because not only was the steak actually turkey, uh, but it was seasoned turkey and it contained uh, both wheat and soy. So here's somebody buying a steak thinking, well, it's just a steak, and instead they're, they're getting gluten. So um, more to do, definitely, but just some food for thought. And um, please let me know if you have any questions or comments. And this is an area that we're really going to have to address uh, very intently in order to turn around this progression that we're seeing in these diseases. I hope you found this informative. And until next time, I wish you very good health.